Hey Swifties, welcome to a brand new episode of Swifty School, where together we walk down Ilya Street covering the latest news and Easter eggs from our fearless leader, Taylor Swift. I'm your host, Reagan Bailey, and it is enchanting to have you here. Now that we're out of the woods, let's get into today's episode. It's another great day to be alive at the same time as Taylor Swift, or should I say, it's another chaotic, crazy, and wild day, as usual, over here in the Reagan household. Now, you guys know, as always, this podcast is merely an expression of my thoughts and opinions. While I would love, love, love to be associated with Taylor Swift or Taylor Nation, I am not. Now, welcome to episode five zero. I can't believe that we're already to our one year anniversary, almost to our one year anniversary of the podcast. It went by so quickly. I honestly feel like it was such a blur starting the whole thing. And then here we are almost one year in, which is totally crazy and wild and so fun. And I'm so grateful whether you're just joining or if you've been here since the beginning. Now, I feel like if I'm being honest with you, I have a bit of whiplash whiplash lately from theories gone wild is how I'm referring to it. I feel like we've officially gone off the deep end in terms of how wild and crazy theories have started to get. And I think that I will, for the time being, blame it on reputation, but we're going to dive deeper into this on today's episode. Consider today's episode as like a conversation starter. I would love to kind of continue this conversation with you guys in the comments over on YouTube. Spotify has a new comment feature that you could drop a comment I want to hear from you guys. You can message me on Swifty School or in the comments there. I think we have to do a little bit of a reset as a community because, like I said, things have gone a little bit buck wild. (laughs) But we're going to chat about that in a minute. Let's do a quick rundown of what I have going on. Now, you guys know I am gearing up. My cloud nose is on. My getaway car engine is getting heated and I am almost ready to go to London. I cannot believe it's only like three weeks away, two weeks away, three weeks away. It's coming up soon. I'm a little stressed because the outfit that I ordered, I found someone selling secondhand dress on Poshmark. It's pink and it has sequins and that's pretty much the whole dress. But I liked it because I could still wear a bra with it and it's sleeveless. So I feel like it would be cute with like a pair of Converse, would be comfortable if it's super hot. I could still wear a jacket over it if I needed to. It looks like the perfect dress, but the seller has not shipped it and it's been like a week and they're not replying. So I'm a little nervous that something happened to it, but Fingers crossed all goes well with the outfit. Can't wait to show you guys what it looks like. Now, speaking of London, I just announced the details for my official London meetup. I'll give you guys the inside scoop. I have been trying so, so hard to get this meetup planned. And I was trying everything that I could to get this meetup to be held at the actual Black Dog. But since they have had so much interest Obviously, since the song came out, they are like fully booked with reservations. I was trying to see if they could open an hour early for us or if we could do like a private event. But logistically, it's just a little too difficult. There are also so many of you guys that are going to be in town. Right now, we're looking at like 140 people interested in the meetup and it was just too difficult to plan. So what we're going to do instead is on Sunday, August 18th, which is the day Taylor does not have a show. So hopefully everybody in town can make it or if you're local please join. Sunday, August 18th from 11 to 1230, I will be at the park across from the Black Dog. So there is a park, like the Black Dog's kind of on a corner. And then there's like a tea house, I think, like across from the Black Dog, kind of on the same corner. And then there's a big giant park called Vow Hall, V-A-U-X Hall, I believe. Gardens, something along those lines. The details are all in my link in bio on social media. The meetup will be held there. We could chill for an hour and a half. You could bring a blanket. You could bring a towel. I will try to pack a speaker in our suitcase if we could fit it. Or if someone wants to volunteer to bring a speaker, that would be fabulous. We could take photos, friendship bracelets, chill, have a cutie little afternoon. I cannot wait. Speaking of London and moving into August. Salt air and the rust on your door is starting to feel like the vibes. Am I right? I cannot believe the last time I saw Taylor was in August at the uh, LA Aero store and that was also salt air and the rest on your door vibes and I can't believe we already had one whole year like the time is just seriously flown by I feel like we have only like 10 stops left on the Aero's tour and I think 33 shows is that right that just doesn't feel like I, I can't believe it's coming to an end but we'll, we'll deal with that when the time comes <laughs> now I'm currently reporting live obviously this is like my house behind me but I'm reporting live from Palm Springs this week I am back in the desert and silly little story time before we get into the actual contents of the episode. This was a little dumb of me. I had a flub. I'm headed to Palm Springs. 
with a friend. We booked this back in like February. The rates were super duper cheap for one of my favorite hotels. We were able to book like four days for what it would normally cost to be like one day at this hotel. So we booked that. It was all fine and dandy, you know, super excited, long time coming sort of thing. And then this hotel had reached out that I had tried staying at during Coachella back in April, but they were fully booked, no big deal. They reached out and they were like, hey, we would love to host you and a friend for a gifted stay at our hotel. And I was like, oh, fantastic. So they asked me about the dates and I was like, yeah, I'm free those days because I just looked at the days I was free, completely forgetting that literally the day after I would get back from this gifted stay, I have my trip with my friend that we plan in February. So kind of silly because I'm like, I'm not going to drive home just to drive back the next morning. So I ended up just booking an extra night and now I'm going to be in Palm Springs for a whole week, which was most definitely not the plan. And now I'm kind of stressed because I've been like trying to get ahead on work and trying to like pre-record the podcasts and do all these things. But here we are. It's all good and all dandy. And Perhaps this is the universe telling me that I need a little bit of a vacay. <laughs> but honestly, if you guys know anything about content creator life, I'm always working. Everything's content. My whole life is content and I'm always online, but that's the job I signed up for and I absolutely love it. Now, switching gears. This might be a little bit of a shorter episode because like I said, conversation started more than anything. But my question for you guys is, has clowning gone too far? And there's a couple of points that I want to discuss about this, because like I said, as a content creator, I know the ins and outs of this industry. And I also know the quote that comes to mind is like the vipers dressed in vampires clothing. The lyric from Taylor. Vipers dressed in vampires clothing. That's the lyric, right? I think it is. It's kind of a continuation of what I was talking with some of my Patreon members about on our latest clown call. But I feel like there's sort of this perfect storm of things that have happened. And I'm curious from a marketing perspective, business perspective, if you will, from Taylor Swift, Taylor Nation, if this has gotten like, if they've kind of gotten themselves into a pickle. And it feels like with clowning, we know at face value, it's free promotion, it's free marketing, it's free fan base involvement by people constantly posting clowning videos online. But I also feel like there's a fine line when it comes to people seeing how they can gain clout how they can monetize off of the Taylor Swift brand, how viral they can go. And I say that obviously from a Taylor Swift podcast that you guys are listening to, but you guys already know full transparency. The only monetization that I make off of anything related to Swifty School is my Patreon. And that's because it's considered a community where I curate content and different activities and things. But my main goal with this is truly a passion project and bringing together community. It is never to monetize. And if I'm being also fully transparent, it turns me off a little bit to making tons of clowning videos on social media because I feel like the amount of content that's gone out there and the amount of accounts that are fully dedicated to like three, four, five, six, seven, 10, 12, 15 clowning videos a week, a day has gotten out of control. And I was trying to think back to like, how did this happen? Like, how did we get here, right? And like I said earlier, like the perfect storm, obviously we know the success of the Eras tour has gotten people's attention. And when people see dollar signs, they're going to chase them. And that's just the way the world works, especially in the United States. But I also think when the 112 day theory, which I love Nikki King, she's fabulous and amazing. And I love everything she says. But when the 112 day theory became correct, I think that that was also a turning point for the fan base because we were like, whoa, we can be right about stuff. And then kind of coupled with the growing use of social media, people figuring out how to make short form content, long form content, whatever it might be, with the Swift Ball mastermind, coupled with the, you know, release of the Swift Alert app, streaming, you know, the Ares tour becoming popular and multiple streamers popping up. And then the obvious success of the tour, it just kind of created what I think is this like virality monetization situation. And I, I'm curious what you guys think, if this will damage Taylor's brand at all. Like, does it lessen people's excitement for clowning? Because the general consensus I got when speaking with my Patreon members on our latest clown call is that, like, OG fans are kind of tired. Like, there's so many people popping up with things that are just so outrageous. Like, <laughs> I was laughing. We What we were talking about on the call last night was, like, Taylor will literally blink weird. And people will be like, her body's glitching 2,193 days ago. Reputation was on her Instagram and the grid is aligned. And if you flip this number upside down and match it with track number six, like it means a snake is happening on this day and National Snake Day is 62 days away and 62 is the number of days between this and this. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. 
I think we need a reset on the Swift first and the amount of clowning that's been happening. Not to mention how like, where do we go from here after the tour ends? You know what I mean? I'm curious to hear from you guys and your thoughts, but kind of what I, I guess my reset personally has been is we need to focus on what's right in front of us because Taylor's made it clear in the past that like Easter eggs aren't complicated. Yes, they are hidden, but sometimes they are purely designed so that we don't detect them until after the fact. A great example being in the You Need to Calm Down music video, her phone case saying lover on it, or, you know, just little things like that. Eggs that are just so obvious in plain sight. I think the Bejeweled music video, Taylor's acknowledged many times that there are Easter eggs galore in the Bejeweled music video, but a lot of them, I'm sure, give us a year or two, and then we'll be able to understand them. I think where I draw the line when it comes to clowning gone too far is like her personal life. And I saw people clowning about, you know, Think back to outfits that she's worn over the years, like especially the past year since the era store has been going on and since she's been in and out of the studio. I saw a video talking about like her Kobe Bryant necklace and perhaps this was alluding to an Easter egg with Kobe Bryant's number being number 24 and, you know, will something happen on the 24th because of XYZ? And I'm like, this is just too much. Like it feels like too much. And for her sake, I can only imagine how much pressure that would be to always be on and always be analyzed and scrutinized and all that, but then to have no freedom in your own personal expression aside from your career because people are gonna dissect it is probably really exhausting. Now we know that there are obvious Easter eggs that she's thrown into her personal clothing when it comes to like a photo op, such as wearing the Cassandra hair clips from Anthropology or carrying a bag that's named the Amy bag or whatever it might be. But I think that's like, so again, something for us to discover after the fact I think sometimes, and I'm going to refer to the 1989 outfits that she's been wearing recently, sometimes I also feel like she might see theories online and think they're so funny or so crazy or so off the wall ridiculous that she plays into them to get us riled up even more, to talk more and make more content and keep this hamster wheel going. But it really means nothing. And she has a plan elsewhere for stuff, you know? Something to keep in mind when it comes to outfits, what I believe, and we've talked about this too on the Patreon call, is that like she has multiples of outfits, right? Like we know she has like 10 different folklore dresses she could wear and a bunch of versions of the 22 shirt. It would be in their best interest to shift some of those items to the next destination that they're going to be on tour and keep some of them behind. So it could very well also be that she just keeps certain outfits with her And that happens to be the combination she wears. Or maybe she was like, oh, I realized I haven't matched a lot of the outfits. Let me start matching them. I could be totally wrong and there could be a total math and science to it. But I truly feel like, and listen, I will say I am guilty as sin. I have absolutely done this and gone too far down the rabbit hole and gotten excited about certain things. And that is so much of the part of being a Swifty, right? I'm not saying I'm like never clowning again because you guys know I love clowning. But I think we've got to like pull it back a little bit. (laughs) Let's look at what's right in front of us. And on that point, let's talk about what's right in front of us. We've talked a lot about the TikTok bead challenge game weekly situation that they have going on over on TikTok. This spells out certain dates with certain eras quite obviously right in front of our face. So what if because reputation is the next bead that we need to collect and it's assigned to the dates of like July 24th to July whatever, maybe we'll see something new with reputation at one of those next shows. Maybe, you know, there will be a debut announcement the week of September 13th, whenever it's aligned towards, you know, the beat game, whatever it might be. I think we've got to start looking at the things that are right in front of us and super obvious that are coming from the horse's mouth. Another interesting thing is on Taylor's most recent Instagram post or one of her most recent, she finally acknowledges Torture Post Department and the success behind the album. And I'm like, okay, interesting. She has waited up until... 12 weeks of the album being out to acknowledge the success of, or 12 weeks of it being number one, excuse me, for her to acknowledge it. Does this mean anything? You know, I think we can go back to the plain sight instead of going so deep down these crazy rabbit holes and just center it back in the beginning. But I want to know what your guys' thoughts are. Do you think this is damaging Taylor's brand? Do you think it's only helping her brand? Do you think that original fans are losing interest? Do you scroll past when you see these crazy clowning videos? Do you engage in them? Do you believe them? Do you think it's just purely entertainment? Do you care? Do you not care? I want to know your thoughts. 
no shade to anybody who creates clowning videos because obviously I literally have a Taylor Swift podcast, a Taylor Swift Instagram page, and I create clowning videos. But I think for the sake of Taylor and the respect for her personal life, there has to be some sort of separation when it comes to Easter eggs. Do I have the exact answer to that? No. But I'm curious to hear what you guys think. So moving into some shout outs from the Patreon, before we get into Swifty submissions, I want to shout out our newest member, Melissa. Melissa joins and I'm so jazzed that Melissa is a new member joining our Patreon. You guys are welcome to join Patreon at any time. Like I said, it's a great place to not only support me and all of the free time that I put into this podcast, all my Swifty content, on my Swifty School Instagram page, but also to connect with other Swifties. You can join the discussion board posts that I have on there. We have tons of different group chats that happen between all the different tiers and members. Our two clown calls a month that go on, which we get on Google Meet and talk for an hour and clown about the latest and greatest Swiftivities. I do bonus Patreon episodes where we deep dive into certain things that you guys request. For example, we talked a lot about Aaron Desser in a recent podcast episode. The last one that I did was all about different cities and how the Eras tour impacted their local economy. So a lot of fun, extra bonus content. And the cool thing is that if you decide to join for the month, let's say you can afford it next month, but you can't the following, you can cancel any time or you can upgrade or downgrade your tier depending on if you're going to be out of town and you can't necessarily make the clown call, but you're still interested in being a member or getting the bonus episodes, you can move things around easy breezy and not a problem at all. And of course, I'd be super grateful for your support. So you can join that at patreon.com slash Swifty School and it's p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash Swifty School. And let's go ahead and round things out with our two Swifty submissions for the day. So First one's from KDO, and KDO says, the lover guitars match up with the deluxe album. There is pink, lavender, and blue, and they all correspond with the lover guitars. But version one is green. I'm assuming she's talking about version one of lover deluxe. Does that mean at some point we will get a green guitar? And if so, would that be hinting or aligned with Reputation TV? I have no idea what that means, but I thought it would be interesting. This is a really cool theory. I like this. There's basically four deluxe lover albums, pink, lavender, blue, and green. We don't have the green guitar yet, and we've seen the other three. I think it could be very likely that we see another sort of 1989 situation where she comes out in all blue outfits, that maybe when Reputation's day has finally come, we see matching green sets, green guitars, green microphone. And I think this is a very plausible and great observation, Katie. So I love that. Next is from Chloe B. And I feel like we've talked about this a couple of times, but she added in an interesting screenshot. She mentions how 2025 is the year of the snake and the snake only means one thing, of course, reputation and perhaps a song off of rep, New Year's Day. She probably didn't see this when she realized, but it would be a perfect announcement and release day. So what Chloe contributed to her Swifty submission that I thought was interesting is that obviously we know Chinese New Year 2025 is the year of the snake, but it also, the snake occupies the sixth position of the zodiac, like calendar. So that's kind of cool. I've long thought that we'll have all the re-records by the end of the era's tour, but if there were to be some sort of extension or trickle into 2025, which I think is highly unlikely being that we've got the NFL schedule and that would be putting her all the way into like summer 2025, I, I just am not seeing it. But if that were to be the case, super cool call out and we're going to definitely be calling Chloe if she's correct. Now, that's all I have for you guys today. Like I said, this is meant to be a conversation starter. I have a couple of really cool guests that are going to be on the podcast the next couple of episodes. I'm really excited. You guys might already follow them on social media, and their content is something that I find really fascinating and information-based and more focused, less on clowning and more on data and the industry and other trending pop artists and sort of like the state of the music industry. So hopefully if you're interested in those topics, you will be excited about my next couple of guests that I'm going to have on. But until then, this is all I have for you today. Thanks for joining. Don't forget to like, subscribe, rate and review the podcast, and I will see you on the next one. I know all too well how busy life can be, and I am so grateful that you chose to stay, stay, stay. Now, just know this is me trying, and I would greatly appreciate if you took a minute to leave a review or maybe share this episode with a fellow Swifty. Make sure you join my broadcast channel on Instagram for more Swiftivities. And long story short, this love is real, and I'm beyond grateful for your support. See you next time.